The Carol Center for the Blind presents Accessible Mobile Phones, Questions and Answers by Brian Charlson, brought to you by the Carol Center Alumni Committee, September 11th, 2010, at the Rachel E. Rosenbaum Technology Center. We have a special, my name is Annie Smith. I'm the president of the Alumni Committee who's sponsoring this seminar. And I would like to introduce you first, Jonathan Gale, who is chairing this seminar. Um, I'm Jonathan Gale. Um, I've spoken to some of you, others of you. We've gone back and forth with emails and so forth. Thank everybody for coming here today. Um, I have no doubt that we are going to learn a huge amount from Brian. Um, he eats and breathes and lives this stuff. His wife would tell you that anytime. So everything that we get today is, is going to be new. Um, Brian can tell you the format that he wants to use for answering questions and so forth. What we're going to also be doing is passing around the telephones so that every table has a volunteer at it and the phones are going to go around. Please note that when you have a phone in your hand to check out, you're only going to have about 20 to 30 seconds to hold the phone in your hand and feel it and then pass it on. This is a full event. It's a full crowd. There are, I believe, six different phones that Brian is going to be talking about and displaying from the simplest to more complex. So I'm going to let Brian take over so I don't take up any of his more time. And again, thank all of you for being here today. We will take a brief break around 2 o'clock um, so you can stretch and use the restroom. And at 3 o'clock, there is coffee and cookies and other odds and ends. If you could stick around for a little while and enjoy that with us, that would be great. Thank you. Here's Brian. Okay, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here today. You might hear that my PA system is already giving us some music that's unscheduled. Uh, remember, we have many, many kinds of technology trying to go at the same time. And as a result of that, some strange things can happen. Let's see if this stops it. It sure enough did. All right. So during the course of the next two hours, barring interruptions, technical failures, uh, any number of things, we're going to try to get through six different kinds of accessible phones. That's a lot to do in less than two hours. So, as Jonathan said, as the volunteers pass around the phones, take a quick look and feel. Don't push on-off buttons. They're <laughs> off when they come to you. Okay? So, touch, don't push. Okay? They'll go around from you and around the table and back and forth. Like I said, there's volunteers at all the tables. And we're going to try to deal with this, well, quite honestly, very rapidly. But we're going to try to leave some Q&A time in the process. So, Len, you here for me? I'm going to be doing this process. I'm going to give Len a phone. He's going to take it to his table. As that's being passed around, I'm going to talk about cell phones in general. By the time that gets around and back to me, I'll be ready to talk about this specific phone, okay? While that phone is being talked about, the next phone will be getting passed around. This is the only way everybody can touch it. And I don't know about you, but for me, seeing is not believing. Touching <laughs> is believing, okay? I'm going to be going back and forth between this, the table to my left, seldom. Most of the time, I'm going to be over here at the podium. So you shouldn't have any problem hearing me. Is there anybody using an assistive listening device today that would like me to wear something like an FM transmitter? None. Okay. Absolutely. The first phone that's going around is called an SMT5800. It is my personal phone. So. You'll see I very seldom dial 1-900 numbers <laughs> just because of this very thing. Up on the big screen in the front of the room, for those who have some vision today, I'm going to be using a PowerPoint presentation to show all of the things that we're doing today. We're also filming today. Mark Sadecki, our web developer here at the Carroll Center, has agreed to be my camera and sound man. So thank you, Mark, for that. 
I also want to thank all those volunteers who are going to make today possible. I'm going to move from our initial slide here. Yes, exactly. Now, I understand that they have many different hats that they wear, but they're also, most, most of them anyway, members of the Lions Club. And I'm a Newton Lion, so roar. A little more volume on that, Mark, if you would. So, I'm going to let you hear Jaws speak through this presentation. I'm going to bring the Jaws volume or speed down a little bit. I think that's whew, slow enough. And Mark's going to make sure that it's loud enough. Louder? Mark? That's it. Can everybody hear that? No. Louder. That loud enough? No. I hear some no's still, Mark. Title is PowerPoint slide show dash left bracket accessible mobile phone. I can hear it in my teeth up here now, so. <laughs> Remember, I get to have this in my left ear the whole time. Okay, so we're going to be dealing with six different phones today. The SMT 5800, the Nokia N82, the Blackberry Curve, the Motorola Droid, the iPhone by Apple, the 4G version. And I just went to the store last night and bought a sixth one, the Samsung Haven. So we have a lot to get through in a very short period of time. Before you even think that you're going to go out and buy something new, Slide three, before, you change phones. before you change phones, there's some things you have to be asking yourself. I tell you, there's a lot of people who just go out there and buy a phone and then they are stuck with a two-year contract and they painfully use the phone for that whole period of time. Think before you buy. Are you pleased with your current service provider? Bullet coverage, bullet price, bullet support. So, coverage, I'm gonna do a poll here. How many of you currently use Verizon? Put your hands together. How many use AT&T? How many use T-Mobile? And how many use Sprint? Uh -huh. Now, let me tell you, that's very, very important, and it does matter who your carrier is. Those of you who use these different services, there's things you've decided to do or not do at the time. The, number, you know, the whole plan, how many minutes? Did you buy a data plan? Are you the only one on the account, or did you get the great family deal? with shared minutes, with rolled over minutes. All these guide dogs in here, you gotta be very careful when you say roll over because it can create real <laughs> havoc. But roll over minutes. You have all those kinds of things to concern yourself with when you decide it's time for me to get a new phone. Bullet, can you afford to change service providers? Bullet early termination, bullet calling networks, bullet additional service costs. Believe me, it's like buying a new printer getting a phone these days, the phone cost is the least expense. The big issue is your monthly bill. You're locked in for a two-year contract. In that two-year contract, you can exceed your number of minutes. And as my darling bride did when she was off a of guide dog school, use that cell phone. That's right, you're here, you're fair game. <laughs> <laughs> She came home, the bill came from Verizon Wireless, and she had somehow spent an additional $300. Additional, you understand, in extra minutes. And she says, honey, fix it. And I got it down to only $150. So she owes me 150 bucks worth of uh, being nice to me over time. Anyway, but there are those costs, and you have to concern yourself with it. I'm on the Verizon family plan. If I chose to jump ship to AT&T, 
the whole system would break down. It wouldn't be just the cost of me changing, but then we'd have two different bills coming into the house. There'd be no shared minutes. There's all those kinds of financial things associated with making this decision. And quite honestly, they're probably the biggest part of the decision. Bullet, do you have any physical limitations? Bullet tactile, bullet motor, bullet hearing. Now, we are all here because we're blind or visually impaired or have people in our lives that follow that description. But there are a lot of other issues associated with using these miniature little devices. Can I feel the buttons? If I have a bit of neuropathy because I have diabetes or if I have some fine motor skills related to a secondary disability or as with me, I'm finding out I'm a little shakier as the years go on. Age has that effect on me. Things that are very sensitive are tough for me to work with. And of course, there's also the hearing related issues. Those who use hearing aids want to make sure that when they get a phone, it is hearing aid compatible. These are questions you need to be asking. Now, the last time you got a phone, I assume you walked into an AT&T store or a Verizon store or a T-Mobile store, or something along those lines. And just like when you walked into the computer store, the guy behind the counter was making slightly more than minimum wage. Now, if this person were the genius that's necessary to understand everything about every phone in the entire store, he'd have a different job. <laughs> so, it's up to you to ask the right questions. Where I've seen people go wrong the most is going in in a hurry, making a snap decision, walking out, and then they don't get back in the, you have time to turn this back in if you really don't like it because life takes over. So, think about these things before you walk into that store. Think about them. They matter a great deal. Now, how many people here would be willing to leave Verizon to go for a different company if it meant a better phone? Black. Hands together. Ah, this is a real truth. You know, you're probably with this company partly because it's worked out pretty well for you. Either as a matter of how far you got around, you know, the, the area covered. You know, your friends are always having drop signals, but it's a Verizon customer or an AT&P customer, whatever. You think you don't have those problems. So you stick with it for that reason. Some of the phones that we're showing here today are not available from Verizon. You can only consider them if you're willing to change companies. Some phones are only available through Verizon. Same thing, you AT&T customers, if you want to make the switch, that's a possibility. Some of them, in fact, all but one of them, fall in the class of smartphone. Anybody want to help me define what smartphone means? <laughs> you know, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. A, a non-smartphone is easier to define than a smartphone. A non-smartphone phone has a series of things that you can't do with that piece of equipment. They include things that utilize the internet. If it can use the internet, if it can access data in that fashion with one slight proviso, you know, there are no such things as absolute yeses and noes. There's only shades of gray. So generally speaking, the rule of thumb is that a smartphone doesn't use the net for anything except text messaging. And even that is kind of a relay race. You're not doing it. The system is using it. So all but one of these phones is a smartphone. So it interacts or can interact with the internet in doing that. I'm asking my uh, people passing around how close we are to getting through everybody. Yeah. Faster, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so I'm going to tell you while this is coming back up to me here, I'm going to do a, some more surveys, okay? Um, somebody tell me what phone they currently use. LGs. Verizon customers all know the letters LGs in one form or another. Samsung, a Haven user. No phone. No phone. Ooh. Anybody else? A Nokia, a Juke, AT&T AT what? Yeah. 
Who's the manufacturer? 